Welcome to the IPFS in web browsers and GUI team weekly sync call. More faces than ever on the call. It's very good news. So we will start off with a round of show and tell about things that we worked on in the last week. Um, and then we will circle back to the agenda, which includes switching to CIDV1 to base32, language repinning, sharing, and saving, and an NPM on IPFS app discussion. But first, top of the list, he's very organized. Lytle. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's sort of a long list of stuff I've been touching this week. Um, so I'll just go briefly over most important or like most interesting parts and skip stuff that's not that interesting. Just let me realign all the windows. Yep. So uh, I've added uh, optional support for translations of blog posts to uh, IPFS uh, blog. So uh, there's a PR with more details, but if you just basically scroll to the very bottom, you will see there's, uh, there's probably, I think I can just show you because it's already merged. <laughs> So if you, uh, right now, I think there's only one post translated but to Chinese simplified, but if you go to like IPFS weekly 11, you can see that there's a section that says uh, that this post is also available in different languages and there's just Chinese version. And if you go there, uh, it will load. You can see in location bar, there's a language code prefix. Uh, there's like a link back to English and other like, versions. Uh, there's a section in Chinese. Uh, it's sort of like a disclaimer that sometimes technical terms and concepts are hard to translate uh, from English to other languages. And if you want to double check, if you are unsure about something, here's the link to original English version. Uh, that's sort of a fail safe we've uh, built into Filecoin websites and I feel it's quite uh, useful. And if you go to page source and go to the header, you will see there are all the uh, meta uh, headers uh, pointing at the canonical version, the default language, and uh, all the available translations are also uh, listed there. So it should work quite well. Um, so that's for translations. Uh, for translations, I also added, uh, I think, uh, uh, a local for Brazil and that landed in IPFS companion release uh, V281 uh, and also in this release we fixed uh, we fixed a problem with uh, if someone had HTTP had IPFS API exposed over HTTPS uh, so if some people used self-signed certificates and stuff like that uh, that did not work it now works and uh, while I was uh, like fixing that, I also noticed that it does not work in Web UI and some other places. So I fixed uh, and bubble up all the fixes uh, in those places. Um, but I think uh, the most interesting part is uh, update on Brave. So I wrote a sort of more details as usually in my weekly dump of <laughs> uh, Chrome socket related stuff, but I feel I, I'm able to make a quick demo. So uh, basically it's still on this uh, Brave build with Chrome sockets branch, but it's nearly ready to be merged upstream. Uh, what I've added is basically uh, runtime, uh, like feature detection of Chrome sockets at the runtime. So basically the same uh, build of IPFS companion can run on regular Chrome uh, and if uh, this Chrome build gives access to Chrome sockets, it automatically upgrades embedded node to the special one. So I have like pre-built a uh, version of companion here from that branch and I loaded it into Brave and you can see it's, it's a fresh install. So it's a, just how it would look like when a new person is installing a companion in Brave. So you can see that what's interesting is that IPFS companion uh, is already set. You are connected to eight peers. And if you check 
you can see that you are actually running JSIPFS. And this JSIPFS is exposing both gateway API and all the usual uh, menu entries are available. And you can basically just open web UI. And you can see here that the web UI loaded from the gateway exposed by the browser extension itself. And it just works. Uh, so it connected to the gateway port. Uh, it connected, uh, it has access to the gateway port. It's uh, using the API uh, from the browser extension itself here. And all the pages work and I can even like upload entire, I, I guess I can maybe, maybe this one, entire directory. I hope there is nothing. It should be family friendly, so. <laughs> yeah, right, and what's interesting is that uh, all the content that is locally available, you can explore using built-in IPOD Explorer, and when you open on the IPFS gateway, it will redirect to the local gateway. And this listing is from the browser extension itself, and you can just load the image directly. Um, what's cool is that you have access to the settings page and you can edit the configuration of embedded nodes. And um, is there, right, and there's also like a refreshed settings page where uh, instead of regular embedded nodes, you have this embedded plus Chrome sockets entry instead of the regular one. Uh, this probably needs uh, a lot of refinement, but right now uh, you can tweak ports here and those ports will be automatically populated to browser extension. So you just change them here and it will change everywhere. I also picked uh, custom ports so you can run Go IPFS and JS IPFS uh, on the same machine without the need for changing default ports just to remove annoyances for um, like regular people playing with it. Uh, so the problem is, uh, I, I, I did some like troubleshooting around this and uh, content discovery was very, very slow yesterday. It, it's a bit better today. And there are small issues with loading specific content over DNS link and uh, sharded directories. But uh, so this stuff is uh, ongoing effort to refine it. My, and my plan for the next week is to investigate how we can improve content discovery and like clean up all the patches because I was uh, focusing on uh, the UX of Companion, uh, making sure all, all the like options, if you are like, you can see that this is an IPFS resource and all the regular options are available. You can even like pin or copy stuff. Uh, so IPFS Companion is full, like, fu fully recognizing embedded node as a valid uh, um, node. There's a feature parity sort of with external node. And like, the next step is to clean up uh, PR remaining uh, upstream patches. And I plan to sync with Rave on Friday uh, uh, on next steps regarding the user experience. And I also started talking with Infra, how can we improve content discovery? Because we could either uh, we could either uh, set up our own like WebSocket based uh, more bootstrap nodes, more pre built nodes specific to the Brave for the Brave users, or we could just uh, invest some time into peer to peer transport and that way it would just work because it would interop with uh, Go nodes. So that's my plan. Uh, and on Friday, I also am meeting with uh, uh, extension developer advocate at, at Chrome uh, to discuss like upcoming changes in like uh, web extension ecosystem. Uh, I've been talking for too long. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Kubernetes, uh, yeah, I can show you, I think. Do you want to? It will be very brief. <laughs> you can like pause uh, the recording of this meeting later and see it. <laughs> nice. Uh, any questions for Lytle? I, I have a question. For it. Do, do we know if we are planning to ship with Chrome sockets enabled by default uh, in Brave? And the second question I had to that, I'll just bundle them up here, is 
uh, you talked about the content discovery performance stuff, kind of almost weather report, like it was better today than yesterday. Do we, do we, do we know where that's coming from or is it really just straight up we have unpredictable network performance in some aspects of this? Yeah, sure. So uh, to address the first question, um, the plan is to merge this branch to the master branch of IPFS Companion. And basically from the master branch, we are building two versions of uh, the extension package. One is specific for Firefox, because there are some additional APIs for Firefox. And there's a separate one, the generic one for all the Chromium-based uh, uh, browsers. And basically what I did last week was to ensure that this generic build can work in both Chrome, Chromium-based browsers and in Brave. And the idea for like uh, launching it, it's sort of like soft path. First, we want to just publish this uh, like runtime uh, feature detection uh, with like regular into regular beta channel without any, adding any additional UX to the Brave itself. So basically that would enable us to dog food. More people who can, like early adopters can start playing with it, report bugs and problems. And when we feel that this like experience with embedded node is good enough, then we'll add like the toggle to the Brave uh, to make it one click install. But for, I believe that it will take more, more a significant time and I don't think we should add this toggle be before we have like actual peer-to-peer -peer transports uh, that interop with each other. So that's the, for the first question. For the second question uh, about like content discovery, right now the embedded node has, uh, I, remo uh, I explicitly removed all the transports apart from the WebSockets one because that one is very stable and it only creates connections to eight hosts. And that's what it's using right now. It does not connect to anything else. So the problem with the discover, content discovery is that we are not able to fetch any content unless one of eight nodes that we are connected to uh, has already like that data in reach. We have like a preload nodes which preload the content we want to uh, to those nodes. Uh, but that did not work as expected yesterday. So I'm talking with infra, if that was like a problem on my end, can we improve it? Uh, there are other options. One that I mentioned is to use peer-to-peer -peer transport that interrupts with Go and other nodes. Uh, that's like the end goal. But we may improve things by enabling auto relays, uh, you know, playing with WebRTC or some signaling servers for WebRTC, we'll see. Uh, so that's that. Yeah, so we, what we need is a daily weather report on the ambient network health, maybe as a dashboard. Rather, than, I mean, I think Lidl presenting it would be fun, time consuming. Um, okay, if there's no other questions, I, I think I was going to say, I see there's no one in your swarm, but I think you just answered that. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, up next, it's Enrique, and I am his proxy because we haven't moved the meeting time yet, so he still can't be here. Um, the exciting thing from Enrique is that if you install IPFS Desktop and you don't have the IPFS command line tool on your path, now IPFS Desktop will install it. So there's a rad PR. Um, da -da 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 -da. Basically, so all, all our documentation now talks about using the command line tool. So it's nice that we can now recommend, um, where was the bit where I tested it? Yeah, so basically, install desktop, get the command line tools. We can simplify the install instructions on the website, which are currently terrible, because right now, you go to ipfs.io, it's like, oh, you should install IPFS and it's redirect. And then you're like, oh, I should install, oh yeah, okay, I should install IPFS. And it's like, oh, download a tar, CD into it, run some scripts, so you know what it does, and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. We ran through this with Eric the other day, and on a stock install of Mac OS X today, this script does not work. So these scripts are extra terrible because they're at a level of complexity that if you're a beginner, you're not going to get through them. And if you're advanced, you already know how to do all these things. 
Um, so the big win is we can skip that. Hooray. I could have had. So uh, this is me just testing it out and it, it did the thing. Uh, there's a layer of indirection in there so that basically we link to a shell script that Artifice Desktop looks after so that we can update the version of GoRTFS as you know, over the auto update mechanism that is baked into Artifice Desktop, which is great. So we can keep things. This is very much aimed at being the casual user's experience of IPFS. Like you don't really necessarily want to think about which specific version you're using. You just want a tool that sits on your taskbar and keeps you running the latest version and keeps that daemon running. Um, so we're much closer. And we, the next step is to go and simplify the install instructions. Positive. And also getting it working on Windows at the same time, which is super rare. Uh, and we also found out about the mysterious uh, permission. Um, did a little, little, we also found out <laughs> rad PR. <laughs> we also found out about uh, when you install an OS X, we couldn't figure out for the life of us why it prompted us for this weird. Uh, you, you must allow access to system events. I guess desktop wants access to system events. Uh, and it turns out that that is the permission required to have your app be able to launch at startup which is interesting because other apps don't seem to prompt me for that. But at least we now have a root cause so we can start to unpack if there's a solution to it that involves not scaring users when they install the app. That would be nice. Um, what else? Uh, so we're very near to, we've reduced the scope of the 0.8 desktop release. Um, it had a bunch of other nice to have in but there is a new release of Go IPFS and yes, I less, less relevant, but there's a new release of Go IPFS 0.4.20 that is a release candidate already that fixes a bunch of bugs. And last time it took us about three weeks, two to three weeks to get the IPFS desktop released after an IPFS release and people started raising issues on desktop saying, this is terrible. I want the latest Go IPFS. What is IPFS desktop doing? You must release things immediately. So it's, we're not you know, desperate to pander to these people, but it is nice to have a release schedule and cadence that somewhat mirrors the latest and greatest Go IPFS. Alan Shaw is not attending, uh, but he is working on a new release of JS IPFS 0.35, but it got stuck because basically uh, problems with DHT performance mean that announcing a JS IPFS release that says, hey, look, everyone, it's got the DHT, and then, then trying it and basically having a terrible time didn't seem like a good thing to push on the world. Uh, so the, the DHT work is, is being backed out of the 0.35 release so that they can get it out the door because it has a bunch of other fixes in as well. And then I think the DHT are going to the 0.36 release, is what he's saying. Um, and numerous other bug fixes. What have I been doing? GUI team OKRs. Uh, I see we spoke a lot of time talking about it, and we came up with this list of things. The conversation in the chat is hard for me to see, so please just do we have a volunteer for taking notes. Uh, does anyone volunteer for taking notes? Is that Dietrich volunteering for taking notes? Thank you very much. Um, that's okay. Uh, the notes section is definitely more relevant for the agenda items because it's just people saying what they've done. Uh, anyone who was at Lisbon might recognize this list for the GUI team. It was a good list. We spoke about it a lot. It didn't contain anything significant about the package managers endeavor, which is a core number one priority for the entire organization. This issue was noticed by the project overlords and we responded. And so now we have added a get a thousand users actively rehosting modules via NPM on IPFS app um, as a top priority for the GUI team. It was a subject that came up in this one, but it, it wasn't, we weren't clear how to approach it in a way that would be super valuable. And we got excited about other things. But when, <laughs> when people were like, hey, come on, guys, package managers, we, didn't really have a leg to stand on. So um, things have been realigned, but we don't know what to do yet. There's a couple of things that I need from folks on this call. A, 
I've had very little feedback on this list. And this is what the GUI team will be working on for the next three months. So please, oh, wait, we've had loads of feedback. It's just plus ones all over the place. Yeah, great. A lack of comments means everyone's up for it. Super cool. Um, we didn't take out the, the thing that we got excited about was have a service that makes it super easy to deploy websites to OpenX. Um, it's not out of the list, but it has been dropped down to a P2. So it's something that I'm personally excited to work on. So hopefully in spare cycles, we will make progress with that. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about this NPM and OpenX app, but I think we'll circle back to that in agenda time because it's a pretty open-ended discussion. Back to the agenda. Uh, Alex raised an issue whereby we were doing a bad job of preserving the base that CIDs are provided in, in the web UI. Fixes 999, which is the emergency services number in the UK, as an assignment. So I very much like the issue number that I got. So uh, obviously, the IPLD Explorer is my baby, and I get very upset when people discover problems with it. Alex was like, here is a glaring problem with the IPLD Explorer. You pass it a base 32 CID and it will force it, it will brutally coerce it into a base 58 BTC flavor, which is exactly not what you want from this tool because its express purpose is to take what you give it and to have it explain to you information about the CID you gave it, not for it to pretend it was another CID. But it turned out the problem was deeper, deeper in the stack. And basically, when you pass a string to a JS CID object, it was the thing that was losing information about the base you had provided. Um, so I think I mentioned this briefly last week, but the problem in the old world was if you passed a CID object a string that was encoded in base 32, it would not preserve that information and it would return it to the default base 58. Anyway, we dug in and we fixed it and it's released and it's been bubbled up to multiple dependencies and now finally it's live on web ui so that is good um and i improve the documentation so that beginners might have a better time figuring out how to use jcid because the whole thing is quite hard work da -da -da. Verbaccio. we can come back to that when we talk about npm diogo would you like to go any any questions for me hopefully not i mean definitely so please please no, okay, Diogo, do you want to share with us the thing? Hey, how's everyone? So good. Awesome. So uh, last week, I've been digging protocol land all week. Things are good. Uh, where am I? Yeah, so we shipped the new project structure that I talked about uh, last week <clears throat> for those who don't know what I'm talking about, basically we componentize some of the, the main components of our school and now they're really components because they weren't. And what that makes, it's, it gives us the ability, not for us, but for everyone who is going to, to add tutorials, the process is so much easier. I'm not going to show it again because I already showed it last week, but uh, it is now shit and it's, it's live. So if you want to add, uh, a new tutorial, you just have to fill out some 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 fields in a adjacent document and everything just works like magic. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, I've been doing some fixes to the um, to some parts of the site, uh, for example, and just show one of them. When we're in a tutorial, for example, this wasn't a link. So if you want, wanted to go to the, the, the new landing page, you had to come to the tutorials and then choose the tutorial again. But right now, this is a link. So you're inside the data structures on any lesson. You just click here and you go to the index of that lesson. So that's a bit that helps something. So I made some other fixes. Yeah, but my, my main goal and what I've been looking at is the code validation. Uh, until now, that wasn't a big problem, but right now it's, it's being a problem with the new, on what Terry and I are working, that it's a new lesson of the IPFS MFS. 
So we're adding files, we're creating new directories. What's happening right now? Yeah, I have to go to this branch. Just let me show you. This isn't live because it's a work in progress. So what's happening is, imagine you add a file. This is a lesson that's being worked. But what's happening is when this error that you see here, this was not supposed to be here because this error is being, is being IPFS is erroring. And instead of this being spit out to us and we can say, okay, this error occurred. So just let's, let's put a, mes a message out that the user will understand that's not happening. This is getting over overridden and it's being automatically appearing here. So basically we have no control. If IPFS, for example, if I put this, yeah, IPFS file, whatever, is not a function. This is being spit out by IPFS and we have no control whatsoever. I'm looking at this from what I've, I've been looking, I think this will, will be a huge refactor to, to make it work. But I think we have to do this because a user that doesn't know a lot about IPFS, these errors are they aren't they aren't clear what you have to do. So we really need to fix this. So I think I'll continue to work on this. This is a priority to make the the files upload license uh, work. I think. I think. There's a question from Hugo. Uh, Diogo, I think on uh, js.ipfs.io we have something similar to this, as in we have a text uh, input where the user can put some code using the IPFS API. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and if, if I remember correctly, um, the way we are evaluating the code and running it get us uh, we have access to the to the exceptions and the errors that come out of IPFS, and we can like okay, if this error equals to this message or whatever, just show other other types of messages. So I think you can look at that code and find find at least some uh, that I can reuse. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is. Uh, that's our goal, but the, the problem right now is how this is wired. So the way this is wired in view, this wasn't taken uh, on consideration. So that's the, the main problem. Okay. If you need some help, so just ping me. All right, thanks. I'll take a look and probably I'll, I'll have some idea of how I can make this better. Nice. So yeah. Something I just want to call out that's cool about the project restructuring that Diego took the lead on is we ended up getting to a point where we realized it made sense to build in now this concept of courses like it's not fully structured so we can kind of create one in the sense that we envision long term but there's you know an array of things that we want to appear on the home page as featured and there's an array of things that we want to appear in the list that's supposedly all but won't always look that way on the main page so there's been some kind of future proofing in the structure that's going to be really cool noise yeah thanks i always forget telling most of the things so <laughs> uh hugo you want to share everything sure So uh, what I've been doing, um, I finished the pull request about uh, removing the IPLD formats uh, for uh, browser builds. Um, we had some back and forth in that discussion. I think right now we finally uh, convinced Alan um, on a compromise. Uh, so hopefully that will be merged um quickly uh i just need to um, finish up some of the feedback on that pr i also did some work on the cli moved around some MF mfs commands that were in the wrong place added um 
a safer way to handle exits or forced exits. Uh, I still need to fix the tests because some of them are failing and I still don't know why. Um, I also reviewed some pull requests, fixed some stuff on HTTP client about buffer not being included when you use Browserify. And uh, most of my week um, was on doing a proof of concept uh, for a fast IPNS. Um, yeah, but I'll talk more about it later. Uh, blocks on a uh, pull amplex. Uh, basically, a pull request that swaps the old amplex for the pull amp the new pull amplex, which will probably fix um, view support in Pro School. And next, I'll be adding support for, for file and file list to the JSIPFS files API. I will continue uh, my research on IPS, IPFS over whatever. Hopefully, I'll figure out the, the DNS part quickly. I have some questions that I need to, to find answers. We also have a meeting next week with um, the other guys that are looking at IPNS, like Aiden and Pedro and stuff like that. And I will fix JS IPFS because right now we cannot resolve IPNS uh, path with uh, basically domains. And that will be helpful for IPNS and helpful, helpful for browser integration, brave integration. And yeah, that's. For now, it's it. Any questions? I want to see your super secret, super secret demo. <laughs> Later. OK. Uh, if there's no questions, let's move on. Dietrich, do you want to share a thing? I, I have some things I could share. Can I share a screen? Yeah, go on then. So yes, still in that heavy reading and review mode, much to review. Um, we did a little bit of work as uh, the GUI team did around the OKRs that we came out of Lisbon with. Uh, also reshuffling and prioritizing IPFS camp and the uh, NPM, or the package management priority, but I'm sharing the Oh, here we go. This one. Uh, if you look at this issue, which I will also link. The screen, the screen is not shared. It's not it's shared. No, nope. not shared. I repeat, warning. Oh, where is it? Is that the, the screen, one? Screen is shared. Yes, not a single click. It's a double click or a quad click if you want to make really sure. Um, so yeah, support IPFS camp, P0. Support package managers, P0. And a whole bunch of things around reducing surprises for web developers, but only a couple of which are P0. But it's been cool to see the overlap between the things that we need to support IPFS camp, like Vue, and the things that we need to support package managers, like being faster, and all of these things also already making progress. Uh, week after we got out of Lisbon and made all these decisions. And, only a few days after we made more decisions after getting back from Lisbon. Uh, one of the things I did last week too was record the video so you could hear me saying some of these same things, but maybe faster, slightly more polished, no, not more polished. Uh, but I uploaded that to the drive and I guess I, the process is that those get mixed up with other people's videos and then they publish a big video at some point. That that was the ask, but I am unaware of any progress or process that's going to lead to that happening. All right. Well, we're, we're ahead of the game. I could I could re-record it a whole bunch of times too. Uh, moving back to the things that I actually did, uh, I did a few things around the collaborations work. So some stuff that's not necessarily related directly to web browsers work group, but involves some web browsers. We are talking to a bunch of friendly collaborators that want to. Uh, 
put that are using IPFS already and want to put it in more places. So those are the things that as a ecosystem growth engineer that I'm really excited by. And we'll have more details about that, but there are things like, I talked with somebody at Microsoft about their side tree project, which uses IPFS for identity services. Uh, if you're interested in identity work, which I think from our project perspective has been a, a little bit deprioritized for this year, but is still ongoing in a lot of different areas. Um, a couple of different things too around kind of like uh, community pulse kind of stuff. So harvesting Stack Overflow posts, being aware of what type of questions people are asking. Um, you know, I, I noticed that I keep finding tweets where people are like X with IPFS. So I started harvesting some of those things out of Twitter and seeing where with IPFS was bubbling up there, which is kind of fun. Um, and various explorations around uh, visualizing, and hopefully I'll have some of this to show next week, visualizing some of what our activity is around uh, like this basic flow of adding a file and there's different ways you can do it and the operations result in different outcomes and different places that we actually have user facing uh, uh, things like see a web UI desktop companion and what these different user flows look like when you walk down them in these different parts of our products. Uh, and then I think the other conversational piece that I had is in the agenda, so I'll stop there and keep it short. Nice. Any questions for Dietrich? I can't see all your faces, so do shout. Okay. Oh, Lido, go for it. Uh, maybe not like a question, but just a, a thought. I, I know that David, uh, David Diaz uh, experimented with uh, for like tracking mentions of IPFS, libp2p, and our other projects using like internal, I think it was like internal bot. Uh, so there's like maybe some prior out there, but I, I'll send you a link uh, uh, after the call. Lytle in his keeper of historical endeavors knowledge is a sage. Uh, Eric, uh, Jim, Jim Pick, would you like to share a thing? Um, sure, just uh, keep mine really short. Um, I finally have a, a protocol.ai email, so you don't have to email jim at jimpick.com anymore, although you can st still do that. Um, I set up a little subdomain for peerpad.net where I can put links to these little uh, hashes and things that sort of come and go. And uh, I'm, I've got like a little experimental going on there. I'm not done with it yet. And um, I wanted to um, just touch base about uh, IPFS camp and help planning out what the uh, building, the, the how to build apps with IPFS the back course should be. So. Um, I guess Lydell and Hugo are um, planning, we talked about that in Lisbon, so um, I need to sync up some at some point. That's it for nice. me. Thank you. Uh, Eric, did you want to share? Really? Desktop two. Uh, I did a, a quick little design review, I uh, don't need to go there, <laughs> of, uh, of primarily IPFS desktop, just you know, from a visual standpoint, and made some notes about um, design, uh, including uh, some accessibility pointers, and uh, just um, considering the overall structure, of it and at the same time um, kind of sp spurred me to do a, a quick mock-up of what it might look like uh, if it was more of a dashboard arrangement. Um, sort of the, the notion is like, oh, crazy ideas, let's do something weird. And then, and then hear about all the reasons why that sort of approach was never done and then, you know, maybe kind of, you know, it helps me. This is mostly about helping Eric understand how all this works. Um, but uh, also maybe, you know, it, it will help, help me uh, formulate some actual recommendations that are incremental, you know, to the way that, that the app is, is built right now. Um, but one, one of the, you know, one of the things is like currently the, the um, currently the app has that the sidebar where everything is kind of equal weight. Uh, when in reality they're they're kind of different animals in some way. Like explore the Merkle 
tree or forest is quite a different thing than, you know, what peers do I have or, or, or what files can I upload? You know, there's like functional things, sort of a dashboard readout thing, and then sort of an educational thing and then settings. Um, so they're kind of different, different beasts. Um, as, and, uh, and they also are the sections, uh, you know, some sections I might want to rarely visit like settings, you know? And so this, this minimizes it. Um, but, uh, where, where did I lost my, so, uh, combination with the, um, that, the, the notes that, uh, Ollie, for example, made on that issue. And then the notes in my, I guess I will be here in my design review. I'll please feel free to, to chime in if you have, if you have some, some thoughts there. Um, and then the, um, I did a, a little survey re about um, IPFS desktop primarily. Uh, again, just the idea here is just educate me plus um, to hopefully remind us all about like what it, who is the, the user that we have in mind and uh, how useful is what we're making for them and what little incremental things can we do to push push things towards being a little bit, you know, as useful as possible and a little better. Nice. Yeah, it's been a lot of like me servicing unverbalized assumptions, which is always good. Uh, uh, Terry, would you like to share a thing? You are sure. muted. Yeah, I just figured that out. Uh, share. So uh, one thing that I just did is made proto school work in social cards so this is what it'll look like on twitter and this is what it'll look like on facebook maybe we'll decide we want different pictures or words at some point but this is much better than not having these um, and this is something that we're gonna have to fix once um once we're able to see that the tutorials or things that we think of as pages are different pages in the spa uh, then hopefully we can do something more targeted. So a tutorial could have its own card and you could share it. But for now, this is something that's generic enough to just be shared in general. Um, I've been doing a lot of prep work for offline camp, web stuff, budgeting stuff. There's a save the date there. If you think you have people in your networks that care about offline first, whether or not they care about decentralized, feel free to share that and we will make the big announcement of the location soon. Um, Lots of other Proto School UX stuff in the works. Diogo has been awesome. So we've spent a lot of time kind of brainstorming and um, working together to make stuff happen there. Um, I built a React component. There's an app. It's in React. It works for my class. Uh, more to come on me actually knowing React. Um, so the files tutorial, I think we might have talked a little bit about it on this call last week that I was feeling st stuck between are we doing MFS or are we doing not MFS. So I'm feeling better because I've picked the clear direction, which is to make this tutorial be about MFS, um, in part because a few people agree that it's the most kind of beginner focused content, and in part because blobs until Hugo fixes it aren't supported in the non-MFS methods in the browser. Um, so we have lessons now on files.write, files.ls, and then I added one yesterday on files.mkdr, uh, which I just haven't done the validation for. It's a very interesting learning process because I go, like I look at the documentation and then I write what seems like it would probably be the truth, like translating the this much of the repo to sentences about how you would do something. And then when I try to do the validation, I'm like, oh, shit, that's not how that works. <laughs> like, All right, let's try again. Why was this built this way? Um, I won't talk about the validation challenges because Yogo already hit on that. Here's the PR if you're interested. So next step, actually doing the launch for camp um, and then more work on those MFS lessons is the biggest thing in terms of content that I'm working on. There's lots of UX stuff that we're still in the middle of. And then better instructions for tutorial authors. Um, Ollie, I'm hoping that you will have some time to poke around in 
the structural changes that Diogo made, um, which we did already put up. There's more that will come when the file upload is added that changes it, but we've already made some improvements to the instructions for adding your tutorial. A piece that's missing there is just what is good instructional methodology, like one thing at a time or those kinds of concepts. And you, so you mentioned a couple of things when we were in Lisbon. One of them was helping people understand what's good educationally. And one was making sure that people can build tutorials easily. So I'm curious how much of your ideas for like restructuring the project to support that building we've already knocked off in the changes we made, or if you had any other ideas that we should also be implementing now before other people build for camp, I think you'd volunteer to kind of be the guinea pig and go first for the next set of buildings. So if you have feedback, that's stuff that we should be changing yeah. sooner rather than later to support camp, that'd be great. It was mostly me volunteering to be the guinea pig. And okay. um, we did a bunch of work for Node Comp a few years back where we had to build a workshop and give it to people and blah, blah, blah. So I can only, I can offer from experience, but I mostly okay. look, I'll be a guinea pig and say, this doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense. And Great. That's Jessica, did you want to share a thing? have anything really to share yet other than hello it's a pleasure to meet you all and um look forward to finding my feet and, and figuring out what exactly specifically um i'm going to be working on over the next couple of weeks so, so i look forward to learning more and hearing more so thanks so much guys all the people on this call are really nice so you should feel free to contact any of them privately if you're like what does this mean what does that mean perfect perfect Thank or, you so much. Or not privately, depending on <laughs> how com confident you're feeling. True, true, true. Are you, yeah. Jessica, are you officially on like specific working groups, like uh, project managing specific things? Um, so I am, my specific area of focus right now is packaging managers. Um, okay. Exactly what that means um, is, is kind of TBD. Um, and, and so I'm just sitting in as much as I possibly can in the meantime. Very cool. Um, we are running on time and there's a couple of agenda points, so we should cover them. Um, bu -bu 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 scrolling back to the top. Lytle, did you want to say something about CIDV1? Yeah, so it's like uh, sort of a follow up uh, to the problem with just CIDU solved, but uh, taking it a step further. Basically, uh, Right now, when people opt in to adding content to IPFS using CIDV1, they get CIDV1 in base 58, I think. And then we, everywhere we usually say that base 32 is the future. But if it's the future, why the default representation of CIDV1 is still base 58? So like, th my idea is that Basically, can we like just change the default representation of CIDV1 everywhere, R removing base 58? Because like people have been asking me <laughs> multiple times, why, why, why base 38? It's still like I opted in, I have added content, and I got this ZD something instead of Buffy. Uh, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Are you, you're sort of in charge of wrangling forward progress on the endeavor. So I think you get to say, we, we should do this and rattle, rattle sabers and make sure yeah. that it happens. Yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's no burning reason. I think Alan would have a more insight into what blocks that right now, but his process has been change all of the foundational building blocks so that they don't set on fire when they do receive a base 32 encoded CID. So that when we come to, to actually flip the switch, the, the final change is a very tiny one. Yeah, so like uh, the thing is that uh, I believe this would be part of uh, preparing our libraries and uh, entire ecosystem for mm -hmm. IPFS camp. It would just remove this uh, element of surprise that people, we say, you can use CIDV1 today, you just can opt into that and it yeah. would remove the problem of uh, converting it between uh, different bases. So yeah. I could probably create issues for Go IPFS and JS IPFS. Yeah. Move it forward. Short of whatever sets on fire because of this change. 
which is hopefully nothing. <laughs> it's, it's a documentation and education effort. It's a promotion. It's like stop using base fifty eight. That's the that's the like t shirt that you need to get. Yeah. But yeah, let's um let's change the default in JSCID and see what happens. All right. <laughs> One way of doing it. Uh, D trick. I fear that language repinning, that's going to be a long and open-ended dis- debate. Should we schedule that for next week or do you want to talk about it tomorrow? Or? No, I, I think I have one ask, which is real quick. If anybody has links to the issues or previous discussions around this, if you could drop them in there, that'd be great. And then we could do some review and talk about it. I did want to raise my, my issue with another really short one, which is uh, if we are going to, if it is time to do a okay, PR review, maybe we should schedule a, a part of this meeting to be dedicated to that so yeah. that we can share in this meeting very explicitly the part of the meeting that is, here's what we plan to do for the next three months. Feedback would be great. Yeah. Uh, instead of hide, hiding it tucked into the different individual updates. For sure. Uh, maybe we should have a call on Friday. Like waiting another week seems un- unideal. Uh, this this time tomorrow to talk about OKRs. Would anyone be up for that? Interested? I can't see everyone, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, I'm gonna I'll send out an invite for another call this time tomorrow to do in OKR chat. Uh, it's three minutes to go, and I really want to see Hugo's demo. Hugo, would you do us the honors? While he's looking for that, I should say we can talk about NPM on IPFS apps tomorrow as well. But okay, so yep. can I start? Okay, so I'm gonna show you. Uh, hopefully, something that works. So let's just start a daemon. Let's add something to IPFS. And we get a CID. Now, hopefully, we will be able to publish this CID if, if I'm able to write. Okay. Okay. We get it's an IPNS. And now the fun part is to see if we can resolve it fast. Okay, that's not too bad. We are below 10 minutes. So I think. Woo! I'm hopefully, I hopefully will get this a little bit down. Uh, hopefully 100 milliseconds, but that's uh, another matter. This is still very early. Um, there's still some bugs to be fixed on some areas of the code to, because some data store stuff uh, I'll still need to go through all the use cases like the gateway result pointing a DNS to the gateway and the gateway redirecting um, through the DNS link and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, this is basically doing all the validation. The put uh, validates everything. Uh, so we, I can guarantee that uh, only the same PRID can uh, change the IPNS uh, record. Um, yeah, so basically it's working. Um, yeah, the next step, this is basically working through Cloudflare workers. So it's IPNS over workers. Um, what? Yeah. So basically, uh, it uses the workers, uh, the, the workers as the API, so it's uh, highly distributed. This is perfect for the browser uh, because the, all the HTTP requests to resolve an IPNS 
will be really fast because it, they will be really near the end user. Uh, and the worker basically uh, saves uh, the records on the key value store that uh, uh, each, workers, each worker has access to. Um, and yeah, that's basically how this works. The next step will be DNS. Right. I was going to say interesting dependency. Yes. Self, uh, uh, yeah. It's the, the, the way to be able to do this without saying to the end users, okay, you need to run some daemon to answer DNS uh, requests or stuff like that. It needs to be a solution like this. This is not like the final solution, uh, but it works and it's self-certifying. So there's not much trust on the Cloudflare workers and the code is like, really small so hopefully i'll be able to convince uh everyone that this can be a solution a solution in a near term so yeah what what you guys think about this i mean sub sub 10 minutes is good sub yeah. second is unreal yes uh, I imagine a hard dependency on Cloudflare is going to be a tough, tough uh, proposition to get past folks. It will, but it's uh, without, uh, yeah, that's what I said. It's, it's not ideal, but it works for everyone without telling them, like, you need to set up your own shit and stuff like that. So let's see. And it's right really, really easy to deploy because it's there. The, it requires no particip participation from the infra team, and it's really, really, really cheap to to maintain. So it's and it will be always like uh, the daemon will try all the methods mm -hmm. that the, it has available to them, so we we can try. IPNS over the DHT can try IPNS over the DNS, IPNS over whatever, mm -hmm. and basically the first one wins. And people can opt out or opt in to each each of them. So I think that's the trick. Like the the, the libp 2 p stack is designed to be configurable, so you choose the pieces and transports and discovery mechanisms that make sense for your app. Um, I'm unaware of like how pluggable the IPNS resolution mechanism is right now, but it should be. It's not really pluggable right now. It's all out no. of But it should but be, right? Yeah, it should be. Right. That's your, that's your angle. Like, this is a totally valid implementation of what should be a strategy pattern. Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right. Any other questions for Hugo? Very exciting. This this came up in the uh, uh, the package managers call yesterday, and the sort of general was like, "How fast does it need to be for a, a massive dependency tree? Like, are you just loading first order dependencies? Can it be kind of about you know ten seconds to five seconds to one second resolution time?" And Alex's point was no, because the IPNS records might appear at any depths in the tree. And you know you've you've got many first order dependencies, and you've got a huge number of third order dependencies. And if they are all on IPNS and they all take over a second to resolve, your install time is blown out of the water. So, so the point there was like, oh, but we don't want to have any points of centralization. And we're like, oh, we have two battles to fight, and one is that IPFS needs to work in an offline scenario. But and in an off in a fully like the there's a net split or there's some, like the backbone has been broken, you will tolerate a few seconds of lookup time using a DHT. But if you're also competing against HTTP and centralized services, you should use mechanisms that that also work quickly where there is where there is those options. Work as fast as you can when you have all of the things available, and work when everything is on fire. Yeah, basically, it's, it's, it's like that. We just need, for now, a near 
uh, future solution that actually works. So you get people to start using this stuff and publishing websites with this stuff. Nice. Uh, just like that, the that guys uh, did it. They started with something that works and then they are evolving to something more decentralized. Nice. All right. We are we're over time. Any last questions? Any last thoughts? Then that is the end of this week's in web browsers and IPFS GUI weekly sync call. See you same time, same place next week and also tomorrow, depending on your excitement about OKR planning. I will send the invite out. We gotta read we gotta rename those. Hopes and dreams. Hopes and, hopes and dreams planning. Hopes and dreams per quarter. <laughs> near to, near term hopes and dreams. <laughs> I find I find the even the notion of quarters is all right. Thanks for all for coming. See you later. Bye. Bye.